Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and I'm celebrating an anniversary today. Fifteen years ago today, in my very first video in about 2009, I worked on the Atlas lathe and I showed how to set your work up in a four jaw chuck using the two key or the two hand method. My very first video. Probably you have not seen that if you're a younger guy or if you don't go back into the archives to look at that. And, and uh, here's a picture of the opening screen right now. So check that out. Rather primitive, I think, compared to what I might be doing today if I'm getting any better. So let's get started. And using a dial indicator, we will set some one inch work up in a four jaw chuck to the thousandth of an inch. Okay, this is a nine inch South Bend lathe with a four jaw chuck and I already have the work in there just rough. I put tape on the chuck so that the two reds, you can concentrate on working in this direction and then you got the two yellows this way. Now I'm sure that many of you do not have two chuck keys in the right size, but the whole gist of this is to set your keys opposite one another and with the indicator in place, move the jaws and the work back and forth until you zero it out, then come over to the red and do that. These are a little bit clumsy because they interfere with the bed of the lathe and this lever right here and other things. So over the years I have made several sets of these knobs and this is just quarter inch square in some scrap knobs. I don't know where I got them. And that just works perfectly, if you can imagine. And I have made other sets of these over the years. There's a hexagon set for one of my other chucks. So this might be a good project for you. Pretty simple. They do not have to be hardened, although these are Allen keys, but this is just soft steel. I'm not sure what kind of indicators you have or what kind of indicator stands, but there's a little articulated fake Noga that does fit on these smaller machines, but the bigger holders just are very awkward. This would work fine, however, I'm not going to use it. I'll show you what I will use. I like these indicators that are mounted on a quick change tool holders like this. They can fit right into the Aloris or whatever brand you have. This is a size A and is ready to go that quickly. These are dedicated indicators. I do not keep them out of, take them out of the holders. I have a video on making this one. Maybe I'll try to put a link down in the description if you haven't seen it, but I'm going to use this one also made out of aluminum. And this is a double acting. It can be used in two different directions like that or like this, and this is the way I'm going to use it today. I'm not really using this indicator, just this one. I think these came from Shars. This is a great method. Don't break the stem off when you move this, and make sure that the tip of your indicator is on center. Okay, whenever you set work up in a four-jaw chuck, we make initial settings, trying to get it fairly true by using the concentric rings right here. So in other words, I will set these two jaws so that they are in pretty much the same location right here. That is, this amount here is very close to this amount. And same thing with the red side. The distance right here should be about the same as right here. Strictly by eye. We're not using an indicator yet. So this is the general principle of what I'm doing. I'm moving the work back and forth with the two jaws like that and I'm working in the red axis and then I'll work in the yellow axis and the work must just be snugged up. Do not tighten it yet or you're going to have trouble moving the work around. You can see it's kind of loose right now. Okay, watch this and this as I make the initial setting and try to get it Does that look about right? Now let's do the yellow. A 
Now I'm not as good at this as is uh, Adam Booth, the master, who holds the champion belt. So there, I'm fairly close, and they're just snug. You can see it's running semi-true, and in fact, that would be good enough for some jobs, but we would like to make it near perfect right now. And now I will move the carriage up. Don't break your stem off, your point off, right there. Now, looking at the indicator, you can see that I'm about within 10 thousandths TIR right now. If your material is not truly round, you will never zero it out. So don't chase that number if you're working with real rough stock. This round aluminum seems to run pretty true. Okay, I'm going to work in the yellow direction. I know you can't see the indicator right now, but watch my hands. Fairly close. Now I'll work on the red. Pretty good in that direction. Pretty good right there. I'm within one thousandth right now. So this is what it looks like so far. You can see it's just within one thousandth. Let's see if we can get it a little bit closer. Okay, I'm in one within one thousandth TIR right now. Okay, here it is in the yellow direction, within a half a thousandth or less, and in the red direction, the little fluctuation you see there may be in the bearings or the roundness of the stock itself. Okay, up to this point I've been using the red knobs as I showed you and it worked incredibly well. However, they are not all that tight yet because there's no leverage with these little inch and a half knobs. So a fella has to come back in with a regular chuck key and very carefully and judiciously tighten them, snug them just a little bit all the time watching the indicator here to make sure that you do not cause any inaccuracies. In other words, I had it about perfect and I do not want to make it imperfect with the big key. Now if you've never done this before, it will take a little practice, but I think you will find it very convenient and useful. If you do, leave a comment. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. I hope you enjoyed my anniversary edition.